The Nigerian Institute of International Affairs, NIIA, organized a special post-mortem roundtable on the 2023 election in Nigeria on the 13th of April 2023. The event was held at the NIIA Lecture Theatre and led by Nigeria and Africa leading scholar of electoral administration and politics, Professor L. Adele Jinodu, and the presidential candidate of the Social Democratic Party, H.E. Prince Adewole Adebayo. The Director General of the Institute, Professor Egosa Osage, in his opening remark explained that the postmortem was organized to analyze and strike a balance on the insight and objectives of the election. He has the comparative frame um, to give us a balanced and insightful academic um, and scholarly analysis of what elections have been. Why do we have the um, kinds of tendencies you know, that we saw again in the elections. Why are elections you know, like warfare you know, to us and so on? Why, why do we get so divisive when we are confronted you know, uh, with elections and so on? So we thought we should have a good balance, um, one from the inside and one from the objective outsider who also has a good, a good grasp of this whole process. Prince Adewole Adebayo in his presentation noted that there was no focus on the foreign policy due to INEC's non-compliance with the Nigeria constitution. He advised INEC to desist from exaggerating their capabilities and shun any act of accepting gratuity. What I can see basically is, let me just do what we should do to react to first thing now. It is not correct that there was no focus on foreign policy, but it wasn't the preference of many of the political parties because it required thinking. And from experience of politics, they realized that you think, you lose. So no need to think. But the answer I will also give is that INEC itself did not come to the institute here in compliance with Section 19 of our Constitution to also get foreign policy content to what he's doing. And then the issue of, um, yes, foreign money coming in. I said a lot of it during my campaign, both domestically and externally. Uh, illegal money came into the election. And I raised that issue, I talked extensively, but I was accused of jealousy since I didn't have money to run my election. I was accused of jealousy, that was why I raised the issue. But I like itself collected foreign money. So I think Professor Tinabi should advise his people in INEC to stop collecting foreign money. Because they too collected foreign money. And that is even more dangerous than a politician collecting foreign money. Contributing Professor Ginado talked about the faulty electoral process, according to him, the glitches that come with the deployment of officials and election materials attribute to the non-readiness of INEC in regards to the election. Our 223 general elections were conducted against the background of the huge investment of INEC in two sets of internal reform measures, beginning with the 2011 electoral cycle. And those measures were introduced to strengthen the capacity of the, of the INEC to undertake the credible administration and management of elections in the country. The general disappointment with a number of process and operational breaches during the, two, during the 2023 general elections, notably those relating to the recruitment, training, and election day performance of adult staff, the deployment of election day officials, logistics and technology from a, from a few days to the elections, to the election day for each set of elections is quite understandable. What is worrisome about these glitches, particularly those relating to operational deployment of officials and so on, is that they have remained recurrent problematic features, diminishing the credibility of our electoral governance from one electoral cycle to the other since the mid-1950s. While those about the deployment of technology such as the efficient working of beavers and so on, have added to the public concerns about the transparency of the elections and about the preparedness, but also the readiness 
Community integrity to be well in preparedness and the readiness of IMF for the elections. Reacting to the discussion, Professor Richard Joseph pointed out the global significance of the election and how it puts Nigerians into difficult situations. In an interview with the Prince Adewale Adebayo on the way forward, he mentioned the need to improve election process in Nigeria. He emphasized that Nigerians should take responsibility, thereby adopting a right approach to achieve a better governance. It's, the first thing is to make sure that we understand what happened. And that we understand it from the perspective of uh, objective analysis, so that we are not just interested in the complaint for, of affected persons and the interaction of all the stakeholders. That we need to improve our elections, but the first thing to do is to analyze it. So what the institute has done is to do what, a postmortem. So for those who are academics, they will take an anatomical look at it. For those who are uh, study, who study systems and how they work, they will take maybe a clinical look at it. For people like us who are uh, lawyers, you can take a legal uh, analysis of it, but the bottom line is that we are starting on time to examine our electoral processes, our politics, and our attitude to better governance. In addition, he advised and called for a reform of INEC as a body and urged the independent electoral management body to work with truth and honesty. I want INEC to do what they can afford to do, which is honesty. They can afford to be honest. They may not be, they, they may not be able to deliver free, fair and credible election because many of the factors will be outside their control. But saying the truth is not outside your control. So I came to contest in order for me to become president of Nigeria. Many factors, most of the factors that will make me president are outside my control. I cannot raise money for myself. I cannot get people to listen to me. I cannot force people to vote for me. But I can make a choice to say the truth. And if everybody who is involved in the process uh, does that, the, I think it's, our, it's all our holy books that say that we will know the truth, the truth will set you free. So at least, Let's our next staff with that. And then that truth will educate them to know the kind of assignment they need to take and the one they cannot do. Esther Agbo reporting for Captain Television.